Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest. Admit that somebody I'm set. I'm going higher tonight. I'm in the Holy Ghost is taking me higher. I'm not taking myself, but the Holy Ghost is changing chair for me. There is somebody here you've been at it for so long. I said God was changing chair for you. You've been trying so hard. You've been digging so well. You've been doing everything possible to be able to get out the right answer. But I got a good news for you. It's not going to be by you anymore. I mean, to not the Holy Ghost is changing chair for you. I mean, just somebody of the Holy Ghost is changing there for me. <laughs> my life is getting better. <laughs> the word of God is coming into my spirit and is changing my situation. <laughs> Hallelujah. I welcome everybody watching us all over the world in the name of Jesus. Those watching from Canada, God bless you from the United States. God bless you from Germany, from UK. God bless you, Rico, from wherever you are positioned to watch us from. God bless you in the name of Jesus. May the word of God in the name of Jesus profit you forever. And what you're hearing tonight will never leave your life even forever and ever. It will stick to you and continually produce changes. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. It is titled Orchestrating a New Day. Hey, and it's a wonderful series. Am I right? <laughs> orchestrating a new day. Glory be to God. And we have been able to see that God wants us to walk, ladies and gentlemen, in the newness of the day. Uh, you know what God is talking about? Ladies and gentlemen, there is no ceiling on your life. <laughs> I mean, there is no rooftop that is topping or that is marking even the heights to which you can go. Ladies and gentlemen, to a believer, the sky is not the limit. Ah, no, 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 no. The Bible says, and of the increase of his kingdom. Ah, of government. The scripture says there shall be no end. So ladies and gentlemen, there is no limit that is set on your life. Come and lift up holy and say there is no limit. <laughs> say there is no ceiling. <laughs> say there is no boundary. Say there is no hindrance. <laughs> I just keep skyrocketing <laughs> in the name of Jesus. You know what God is talking to somebody here tonight? God is saying that concerning you, nobody can define your limit because I've not defined any limit. I've not set any limit for you. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Only you yourself can set a limit on your life. The Bible says the limited the Holy One of Israel. But tonight we are learning the tenets of God that we may allow the Holy One of Israel to do all that he wants to do in our lives. And when he starts, ladies and gentlemen, nobody can stop him. And then we begin to see our past shining. <laughs> we begin to see the glory of God rising every day in our lives. Remember the scripture says in Proverbs chapter number 4 and verse number 18 that concerning the righteous, his path is like a shining light. The scripture says it's shining what? Brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. I don't know who I'm speaking to here. The time for your explosion has come. God is bringing you into a season of monumental explosion. By the power of the spirit of the living God, it shall be clear to every devil that angels are visiting you now. That the communication of God is centering on your life. That the conversations of the Almighty is coming through for you. Oh, come on, that the power of God is resting on your life. Lift up holy and say, His power is resting on me. And it's resting on me for good. Glory be to God in the highest. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? Is somebody receiving something tonight? I feel like tearing open the boundaries for somebody tonight. That in the name of Jesus, no limit to your life. I say in the name of Jesus, no barrier to your life. In the name of Jesus, your obstacles are converted to miracles. By the power of God, I see in the name of Jesus, every form of impediment lifted by the power of the Spirit. And tonight is the night somebody is experiencing a free way. <laughs> As said, somebody is experiencing no stoppage. Somebody is experiencing a glory galore. Oh, come on, I see beauty and glory extravaganza. It's coming through for somebody here tonight. When they see you, they see attractiveness. When they behold you, they behold favor. I said, when they touch you, they touch the reality of his power. If that is concerning you, come and let him be the loudest in the house. 
Is somebody catching what God is talking about? Now, what I will say, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about something that is very crucial tonight uh, that everybody needs to understand that God wants you to orchestrate a new day. That is to say, continually, your path should not be stagnant nor be regressive. God wants your path to be progressive. God wants your path, ladies and gentlemen, to be the onward moving, forward moving, and ever upward moving type. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? God doesn't want anything to stand on your way and doesn't want you to give any excuse, ladies and gentlemen, for stagnation. Every blessed day in your life, new things must report because the Bible says he daily losers. <laughs> I say daily losers. Come on, give him praise in the house. Say, Daddy, thank you. You let daily load me. <laughs> the Bible says he daily losers with what? With benefit. That is to say, the life of the saint is a fully loaded, heavily decked life. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, gravitating after you are still better, even than the best of the whole testament. Remember I said we are persuaded better things of you. Even things that accompany salvation. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse number 9. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what your desire is. The Bible says there are better things following you. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. How many days? <laughs> That is to tell somebody here, you are listening to me tonight, that every day of your life can't. Because every day must minister something new. And we need to have and develop a sense of value, ladies and gentlemen, for the move of the Spirit in our lives. Because it is the move of the Spirit that orchestrates the newness of days. I don't know who I'm speaking to here. God has brought you to the realm. We are every day, in the name of Jesus, when you close for the day, you have reasons to hit the floor, even with your nails, uh, and you will start giving God praise. With holy hands raised up, because every day is ministering new dimensions to you. Do you know this is the design of the Father? And that's our experience, giving praise in the house. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? So tonight, by the grace of God, God is bringing us into orchestrating a new day. And we began to look at, you know, at the earlier, you know, series on this topic, we began to look at the factors responsible for the orchestration of new days. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, we started with the Holy Ghost factor. Am I right? <laughs> and I think we still love the, I think we still love the Holy Ghost factor. Am I right? <laughs> Do I still go on, on the Holy Ghost factor? Glory be to God in the highest. I love that factor so much. Amen. Uh, tonight, by the grace of God, I will still be on the Holy Ghost factor. And the Holy Ghost factor that I will be teaching tonight uh, is on the leg of building your capacity. <laughs> on the leg of what? Building your capacity. Now, I, I wanted to understand, come and tell somebody, building your capacity in the spirit. I wanted to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that capacity is the ability to do work. <laughs> I mean, is the special what I call agility to carry out any task. Without capacity, ladies and gentlemen, uh, carrying out a task is literally impossible. <laughs> it takes energy, ladies and gentlemen, to be able to do a work. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, you need some strength to be able to carry out some task. Uh, and capacity has been given unto every man by God. When God created man, ladies and gentlemen, he didn't create you, sing, he didn't create you uh, empty, he didn't create you vacant. Ladies and gentlemen, he deposited a solution inside of you. He deposited a dimension of gift inside of you. He deposited a dimension of grace inside of you. He deposited, ladies and gentlemen, some wonderful things inside of you that the discovery of and the utilization, I mean the development and utilization of, will carve an inch for you even in the race of life, even among humans. Humanity. I mean, among other human beings. Uh, many people have not been able to find their food in life uh, because they've not been able to discover what God has designed them for. Many people have not discovered what God has put inside of them, and therefore it is practically an impossibility even to know what life should be or what direction life should face. Now, tonight is a very important message, ladies and gentlemen, and I want everybody to please listen. Please listen. It's a very important message because it has to 
to do with the core of your destiny. And it has to do with your significance and the weight of your relevance among men. Many people are just living here without a weight. Many are just living here, ladies and gentlemen, insignificantly. Many are just appearing every day as non-entities. They are just part of the numbers. There is nothing, ladies and gentlemen, alarming. Nothing distinguishing, nothing distinct about them. Because they have not found out and they have not discovered the invested ability of God on their inside. Am I talking to somebody here? Every man has been vested with ability. Every man, ladies and gentlemen, carries some certain deposits of God. Genesis chapter number one, the Bible didn't say, let's make man so that he can be a waste on the earth. No, why should your life be a waste? He said, Genesis 1, 26, let's make man our own image and our likeness. You see, that he may have dominion. That means that he may have ability, capacity to ride over. Ladies and gentlemen, there is something inside of you that gives you preeminence among men. There's something inside of you, ladies and gentlemen, that make you prevail in the race of life. Somebody's watching me online right now. The God is speaking to me that you are discovering your gift this time. I say you are discovering the endowment of God in your life this time. Am I talking to somebody here? In Romans chapter number 11, verses 28 and 29, the Bible says the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. That is to say you cannot discover your calling without discovering your ability, the endowment, the giftings of God in your life. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The deposits, the fine deposits, beautiful deposits, oh my goodness. The inner, inner, nearable deposits of God in your life. They are part and parcel of you. Nobody can take them away from you. Nobody can steal them. They are your endowment, ladies and gentlemen. You may take my clothes. Nobody will steal my clothes. <laughs> you may take my shoes. Nobody will steal my shoes. But you can't take my preaching ability. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? It's an innate endowment of God on my life. Am I talking to somebody here? You give me the mic, then you know this man is gifted. Oh, come on. Am I talking to somebody here? <laughs> you give me the mic, you will know that there is a grace of God on this mic, on this man. Ladies and gentlemen, that is exactly the same thing that I'm talking about here to somebody here. There are some wonderful endowments that are in the new level. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody can take them. The devil got nothing to do about them. And that is a good news for somebody here. That the devil told you that you lost it is a big and white lie of the devil. I am here to let you know your deposits are still in there. <laughs> I said the gifts of God are still residing in you. I said the lifting forces that have been deposited in your life, they have not departed from you. May I talk to somebody here? You committed that sin and you thought the sin paralyzed your ability? I got a good news for you. The ability of God are still with us. I mean, they are still on your inside. The Bible said the gift and calling of God are without repentance. Even if God can't take it, the devil never put it there, can't take it. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. I said that witch behind your house cannot take it. I said that sorcerer cannot take it. May your gift be forever. May your gift speak forever. Forever. May your gift produce forever. If that is for you, I think the hymn should be the most robust in the house. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? So I got some special endowments over your life. Uh, and most especially when you're not coming to Christ, when you become born again, these endowments are communicated better to us by the Holy Ghost. Uh, am I talking to somebody here? The Bible says uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, starting from verse number 1, it's a concerning spiritual gifts. I will not have you ignorant. Uh, and verse number 4, the Bible says, uh, he said there are diversities of gifts, yet the same spirit. Verse Five, there are diversities, even of administration, yet the same Lord. And then verse number seven, six, and the Bible says there are diversities of operations, yet the same God that work at all in all. And verse seven, the Bible says, but the manifestation, talking about this gift, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given unto all. That means there is no ungifted person in the body of Christ. In so far as the Holy Ghost is in your life, you are not ungifted, brother. I say so far as the Holy Ghost is in your life. Uh, you are not untalented. Am I talking to somebody here? You are not irrelevant. Uh, there is a deposit that has been moved, uh, that has been shifted. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it has been deposited into your life. Uh, the Holy Ghost came with a deposit uh, that fits the peculiarity of your destiny and installed it into your life. Uh, that is a good news for somebody here. You might not have discovered it, ladies and gentlemen. You're not destined of it. Can you turn to yourself? Just look at you. See, you're so beautifully endowed. I know, come on, I think somebody's going to psych himself some more. Say, oh, guy, oh, babe, you're so beautifully endowed. 
Glory be to God. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? The Bible says the manifestation of the Spirit is given on a whole prophet without verse number 7. And verse number here, the Bible says to one is given a word of wisdom. To another, the Bible said the word of knowledge. <laughs> and you began to see the night gifts counter there. To another one, the designing of spirit, another one, the gift of faith. To another one, the workings of miracles. To another one, the gifts of healing. To another one, the gift of prophecy, the interpretation of prophecy. Now, I mean, interpretation of tongues, and like, and like that, like that. Now, all the nine gifts, the Bible says, is given unto. Now, you see, when the Bible says that unto all is given the manifestation of the Spirit, you see, everybody got it. And the Holy Ghost is the worker of all this endowment. No wonder verse number 11, the Bible says, <laughs> and all this naked brody are worker, that one and self same spirit, divide and dividing severally to everyone as he will it. So, ladies and gentlemen, the initial deposit is by the will of the Spirit. I mean, the weight is by the will of the Spirit. The measure is by the will of the Spirit as he will it. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So, he divides to everyone as he will it. He divides to everyone as he will it. Everybody got the initial measure as he will it. So, there is no man that does not have a measure by by the will of the Spirit. Am I talking to somebody here? For the manifestation is given unto all. I don't care whether you're sinning or not. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people under the sound of my voice. Their own manifestation is in entrepreneurship. There is a grace for entrepreneurship on their lives. That grace has not been speaking for so long. The time has come for Lagos to reckon with it. I'm speaking to somebody here. The time has come for Nigeria to reckon with it. I said the time has come for Africa to reckon with it. Your prosperity will be so unusual that they will be asking, how is it doing it? Is it inducing work concussion? Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to tell them what I induce is more than one concussion. Because this is uh, the concussion from the Holy Ghost, the creator of Satan himself. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. Better words is in the hand of the Holy Ghost. Uh. I said better increase is in the hand of the Holy Ghost. Uh. I said better grace is in the hand of the Holy Ghost. Uh. May I prophesy on somebody here. Every day in the name of Jesus, I see your grace activated. Uh. I see your grace activated. Uh. I see your gift activated. From now, your gift begins to speak. I say your grace begins to clear grounds. If that is for you, come on, make it the most robust in the house. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? Every believer, therefore, is gifted. We are all engraved. And I wanted to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that if we agree that this manifestation has been given unto all, and then, ladies and gentlemen, we need to ask ourselves, Manabo Zobredi Gerokster, what is the next in here if it has been given unto all? I wanted to know that the measure of it is as determined by the Spirit, not as determined by you. And I mean the initial measure of the grace that every Everybody carries. I remember, ladies and gentlemen, when I started out, I mean, to preach and all that. At times I preach, they tell me, Pastor, you threw a lot of sticks. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, everybody started out with a measure. Am I talking to somebody here? And nobody started out, I mean, maximally. No, 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 no. That place is not in the body of Christ because the body is designed for growth. Am I talking to somebody here? So the, the, to, to, to reach the peak and start from the ceiling is not existing in the body. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Everybody started out with the initial measure. With the what? Initial measure. That is what that is what it is. Now the Bible said this measure is given unto everyone. In Ephesians chapter number four and verse number seven. Uh, Ephesians chapter four and verse number seven. The Bible said, Unto all of us has been given grace. Can you see it? Unto every one of us. Now that this is God still repeating it. Now remember this letter was written to the body of Christ in Ephesus. Uh, and Brother Paul, the apostle here now, is speaking to them in Ephesus, and he said, Unto all of us. Uh, that means there is no brother exempted. Don't care whether that brother, ladies and gentlemen, got only one cloth, he got only one shoes, and in fact, uh, there may be a brother there that even got nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says concerning that brother that got nothing, in so far has he got the Holy Ghost, the Bible says grace has been given unto him. Am I talking to somebody here? Come and lift up holy hands and say there is no ungifted person in DGCC. 
Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? The Bible says, but unto every one of us uh, has grace been given according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Uh, that is to say, the gift of Christ, which according to 1 Corinthians is the manifestation of the Spirit, the Bible says is in a measure. So that means when the Holy Ghost comes inside of you, the extent of his manifestation, which we call gift, uh, the Bible says is in a measure. So uh, the measure is given unto everybody differently. If you ask, if you see everybody, anybody that says uh, we are all equal, the ground at the cross is equal, he's making a big, big mistake about it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not equally gifted in the body. No, 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 make a mistake about it. We are given in different measures. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? The Bible said the spirit divides severally as he wills. He divides and devices. Am I talking to somebody here? So the initial measure is as the spirit wills, and he gave it on to different. You see, he can give you the word of wisdom, and the height of the word of wisdom he gave unto her, ladies and gentlemen, may be more than the one he gave unto you. Are you catching what I'm talking about? You don't have, the two of you have the word of wisdom, but more is one is more than the other. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? And he can give you the word of wisdom and give him the word of, I mean, the gifts of healing. I might talk to somebody here. He devises severally and he gives it in different measures. Do you understand? So it varies both in kind and in quantity. Both in quantity and in quality. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So you see, ladies and gentlemen, when he gives unto us, the Bible says everyone has it according to the measure of the gift of Christ. And in Romans chapter number, uh, Romans chapter number number twelve, uh, the Bible says in the third verse, Romans chapter number twelve, uh, Brother Paul speaking, even in the third verse, uh, he said, "I speak unto you, even by the grace of cause of God, uh, which he has received." Uh, he said that no man should think so highly of himself than he ought, but let every man think. So soberly, even according as God has dealt with every man a measure of faith. So, uh, faith here is the gift of the Spirit. Uh, he said, as God has dealt with every man a measure. Everybody has his own measure. Come on, touch your chest. Say, I got my own measure of endowment. Are you getting what God is talking about? Everybody has a measure of gift. Uh, do you understand what I'm talking about? And this gift, we, uh, of course, the gift of God is what determines the grace at work in your life. That is what is called grace. That is the unlimited uh, operation of the spirit that is on your life that is working out effortlessly. And um, because your gift is at work, the manifestation of the spirit is at work. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? That is why you will see Brother Paul the Apostle speaking in Romans chapter 12 verse 6. He said we have grace differing according to gift. Uh, and of course, you have in fact, if, if we have gift different according to grace. And then, of course, in that Ephesians 4, 7, he said we have grace different, of course, <laughs> according to what? According to gift. So, you see, ladies and gentlemen, he's just talking about the operation of the spirit that is in your life. Of course, that is the grace of God that you carry. If somebody catch what I'm talking about, it is different. In that Romans 12, 6, he said one way, if, if there is, he said he that has the gift of prophecy, let him prove. He said he that has the gift of faith, he's the had the gift even of, of exhortation let him exhort. Uh, he that has uh, been the gift, uh, the ministry of administration, let him administer. He that has the gift uh, even of hospitality, he said of course uh, let him give. Uh, now you see he began to talk about different kinds of graces, different kinds of gifting that we have oppression by reason of those graces. Uh, I might talk to somebody here, but remember the initial deposit is still by the Holy Ghost. Uh, I might talk to somebody here. The only person let Ladies and gentlemen, that God gave the spirit with that measure to the Lord Jesus Christ. Am I talking to somebody here? But even Jesus still had to grow, even in the manifestations of the spirit. Remember in John chapter number 3 and verse number 34, the Bible said, He that is sent of God, the same speaker, the word of God, for unto him has God given the spirit with that measure. That means Jesus got the spirit with that measure. But you and I, ladies and gentlemen, we got the manifestations of the spirit in measures. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? The manifestation is in measures. He divides everybody as he wills. He puts it as a deposit. Now, why is it that the Holy Ghost didn't just put the maximum manifestation capacity inside of us at once? Ladies and gentlemen, and then we all begin to manifest at the maximum level at once. Ladies and gentlemen, why is it that the Holy Ghost, ladies and gentlemen, didn't just, you know, uh, just take us there at once? Ladies and gentlemen, it is because there is a role you also has to, um, you have to play in your development, uh, even towards the height of the glory 
glory that God has given unto you. God wants you to play a role. That's the reason why the Holy Ghost gave it to you in a measure. Now, in that measure, the good thing is that that measure is developable. Am I talking to somebody here? That measure is increasable. Now, that measure is not static. That measure is not stagnant. That measure, ladies and gentlemen, is not retrogressive. If you can just do something about it, you can increase it. Am I talking to somebody here? Now, the responsibility of increase, ladies and gentlemen, strongly lies in your bosom. God wants you to develop the gift that he has given unto you. God wants you to develop the measure that has been deposited in your life. Uh, you just look at it and say, I just like sewing. Yeah, you like sewing. But what are you doing about a sewing gift? What are you doing about it? I just like, you know, I, I, I like pressing some, the piano. What are you doing about it? Have you taken time to pray about it? Have you taken time to invite the energy of the Spirit to help you with that gift? You know, you know what? Some people play piano and they play worldwide. Some people beat drums and they beat worldwide. Some people, you see, I just like this, I just like that. You can just like it. But you know one thing? When the Holy Ghost is at work on that gift, when the grace of God is at work on that endowment, am I talking to somebody here? Ladies and gentlemen, you begin to see dimensions coming up out of it. You begin to see doors opening out of it. I don't know what gift you have called negligible in your life. From tonight, I see God opening doors for your gift. I say, I see door, God opening doors for your gift. I see the most I got opening the doors of relevance for your advancement. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? The gift of a man make it room for him. Am I talking to somebody here? Somebody came in front of me today. As the woman just stood, I said, how are you? Oh my goodness, mama, this is what I see in front of you. You got a man, man. You going to marry a man. And I see that the man is not in this country. And this is what I see about the man. His finances are down. And you are thinking this. Ah, the woman said, ah. And your son, she's marrying somebody. I'm looking at it. The boy is in the medical area. And I'm looking at him, mama. And then you, 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 you got this. You got that. And... Do my just look at you and say, ha, ah, ah. Mama, you can't talk about it. Who can lavish me? Abu. You know what? I said, Holy Spirit, why did you move this way? I said, Holy Spirit, you're going to go to meet my niece. But that's the month of my journey. You see, the gift of a man make it room for him. I charged my gift before I came home. Mama, I said, I was just moving. I, I seen the depth of revelation was so terrific and so hacking. The man said, ha. He said, this my son, you are right. He said, the, the person he wants to marry is in the medical field. This is where he, he said, this one. He said, this one is true. I, I, I just met a man. He said, and the man is this. And the man is true. The man is abroad. He's not in Nigeria. Uh, it's true. He does, he does not have any money. He says, ah. I was, the woman was dumbfounded. The, other, the gift of a man make it room for him. It's an endowment once it is in your life. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the eye to which it can go is your responsibility. Let me tell somebody, the eye to which your gift can go is your responsibility. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? So everybody is gifted. I don't care whether your own measure is one and Pastor Femi's measure is 20. No problem. You know one thing? That's one. If I can work on it, I will meet that 20 and I will beat it. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. I said, that one, if I can work on it. Ladies and gentlemen, it can take me to 100 and I will beat it. There is no ungifted person. What are you doing with your endowments? And this is the word unto us tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Capacity building by the Spirit. Uh, you know what God is talking about? This capacity I've given unto you, this gift are abilities. Uh, they are special capacity to do work. That means to carry a certain task that will bring certain gifts. When you work, what do you get at the end of the month? You get me, am I right? Please understand, ladies and gentlemen. That means these endowments are given unto you to bring payment to you. The Bible says the gift, the Bible says the manifestation of the Spirit is given unto you to profit without. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Am I a cow? 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 Am I a Oh, come on now. I'm talking to somebody now. <laughs> Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? <laughs> Glory be to God. The gifts and calling of God are without what? They are without repentance. That's how it is. And everybody that came today, that's exactly what happened. As they are stepping in like this, the Holy Ghost just started ministering. Those. As they are stepping in, the Holy Ghost just, okay, she tapped in the bass. 
Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, you see, that is exactly how it is in the spirit. When we understand how to function in the ability of the spirit that is given unto us. Do you understand? It's given unto you to profit. So even we... Ah. <laughs> A man, he came home. He didn't bring anything. By the time the gift started working, gaga, gaga. The man said, I can't, I can't leave you like this. Ah! He said, please give me your account. I will do transfer. Ah, he said, I must do transfer. <laughs> I, I looked at the man. Since the day has been coming, he never dropped anything. But when he saw manifestation, only I must do what? Ah, there is something that is coming up in the ability of God on your life tonight. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? I am taking you into that realm tonight so that you may know that it's not that you are not endowed, but it's just that your endowment, ladies and gentlemen, need to be increased in strength for deliveries. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So you see, ladies and gentlemen, when these things rest on our lives, we know we carry these endowments. And I must let you know, ladies and gentlemen, the measure of the endowment you carry determines the flows of virtues to you. <laughs> the measure of the endowment you carry determines the flow of profiting to you. If the manifestation is for your profiting, if your measure is low, that means unserviced. Ladies and gentlemen, the profiting is low, unserviced. <laughs> that is what happens. Many people are wondering, it seems God is partial. God is not partial. Not everybody is servicing their grace. Not everybody, ladies and gentlemen, is still in their field. If you till your field, the results will show. If you till your feet, the result will what? It will show. Do you understand? Everything works. When you work. <laughs> when you work it, it works. By the grace of God. So many are leaving their grace on service. And their capacities remain small. And this thing was given unto you so that you can bring in your own contribution as well. And so that you can have a sense of value for it. Because if everything is just done by, by God, you will easily lose it like Adam lost Eden. He didn't work for it. He was, in fact, he never had a childhood. He was born high adult. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Everything was even already existing. He just came and said, everything is yours. He said, eh, okay. I mean, they said, the words you didn't labor for, you easily lose. You easily lose. That's how Adam lost it. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? But God wants you to labor on it, to go through the process, so that when it grows, if you can take it there, you can keep it there. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. Your wealth will never diminish. <laughs> I said the height you are going, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, will never in any capacity bring you down. When you get there, you will stay there. You will keep going higher and higher. Retrogression is not your portion. If you believe what I'm talking about, lift up holy hands and shout and receive it. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? So what are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? God relates with us on the basis of this endowment. There are some certain endowments that can't fetch anything big. Small endowment, small, small fetching. That's the truth. If you are on a small endowment, don't let me deceive you. What will come to you will be small. The measure of your endowment determines the measure of the flows to you. That is, there is no gimmick about it. It's all over the scriptures. Nobody ever gets everything without growing. God told the children of Israel when they landed even in the promised land, God said, I will drive out the inhabitants small by small as you grow. Can you imagine? He said, so that if I drive them out all at once, he said, beasts will fill the land. He, are you catching what I'm talking about? He said, but as you grow, I will drive them out small. So your capacity determines your inheritance. That's what God is saying. The place you occupy is a function of your extent of growth. So if you grow wider, Ladies and gentlemen, what you what, what, what will accrue to you will be what? Wider, will be bigger. That's what God is saying. So ladies and gentlemen, your ability determines what is given to you. The Bible said in Matthew chapter number 25, starting from verse number 14. The Bible said a master was traveling and he called his servants, even in his house. And of course, I mean, he gave them talents. The Bible said unto one he gave one talent, unto another he gave two. And unto the last one he gave five. He said, occupy till I come. That is to tell somebody here your gift will never be relevant till Jesus comes. To say that there is an expiry date on your gift is a lie. Till Jesus comes, your gift will continue to work. Yeah, I'm not talking to somebody here. Occupy till I what? There's somebody here, a new gift will enter your life and to the day you leave this world, it will continue to work forever. I said tonight, take it in the name of Jesus. Occupy till I what? 
I knew when the prophetic gift came inside of me. It's still working now. That was over 20 years ago, and it will still continue to work. Please understand, it, is the, it, the, it has to expire date till Jesus comes. Titi Ayeni. Ah, come on. I'm talking to somebody here. Yeah, is somebody catching what God is talking about? He said, he said, he gave them different talent. He said, occupy till I come. He gave them according, verse 15, to their various abilities. Can you see? So when God is, what comes to you is a function of your ability. It's a function of the power, grace inside of you that you are built on. God can't give you a wage that is higher than you to kill you. <laughs> Many believers are crying for greater wage of glory that is higher than it will just crash you down. If somebody catch what I'm talking about, you can carry a bucket of water and put it on the head, a full bucket of water, and put it on the head of a, an eight month old baby that is just staggering to walk. Ladies and gentlemen, the baby will fall, the neck will will break and the baby may even die. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Because the baby has no ability for that. I remember when I was young, you know, I was in my sister's house. We used to fetch wells there. I mean, well water rather. And then, of course, my niece, little niece, will come out to come and fetch water with me. So I will carry two giant buckets. I will fill the water, I mean, fetch the water out, pour it. Now, she shall wants to carry. You know what I did? You know this, um, this butter, uh, uh, what do you call it, pack. But uh, you know it has handle like bucket. Uh, very small like this. Uh -huh. So I now pour water inside that one. So she will carry that one while I carry the two down bucket and we will now be going inside. And she will be following me. If I have to even slow down for her because she's very small. You know, just like about one year or one and a half years. So she'll be taking her steps small, small. Even with that one, she's sweating. <laughs> Is that what the catch I'm talking about? So I have to give her that according to her ability. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? So your endowment is in relevance with your abilities. Now, ladies and gentlemen, who now determines what you get is you, not God. If you leave your ability down, that is what you get. If you raise your ability up, the virtues flowing to you will be mightier. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? That is how it is. Some people, ah, hey, let me come in now. Come here, my first year I work better to two. You know, I was telling her came in today. She came to my office. I said, I, I, I was coming to your office today, and I just, you know, made some new designs in my brain. I said, Lord, I need, I need, I need a tailor to come and fix this. And then one of my sons came and he brought me, you know, Agbada, I mean, clothes, ten yard. Oh, I said, I want to make another one. He said, I'm sending my tailor to you now. And the tailor came immediately, and I gave the tailor everything. Now. I'm not buying the, the first. I'm not buying the second one, but all the material. I just give you all the design. So go and exit. I'm not paying for it. The next I'm talking about, I mean, this thing cost about 200000 250000 Here is what I'm talking about. They tell her to me, I said, the, the cloth and all that, and this, he said the cloth itself is about 100000 They saw in this and this and this and that. I said, I said now everything, I said, go and do. The, the, just one cloth, oh, just one. I said, go and finish everything. I'm, the, the man is paying for everything. I'm not, I'm not paying it. I just desired. When the man came, the man, I mean, I was just giving him some sudden prophecies and everything came to pass like that. He came to me to say, he said, I just came to say thank you. I just came to say what? Thank, you see, it will flow to you according to your ability. You know, your gift will always attract. That's how it is. So if you see some people are just shining and somebody is getting angry. Don't be angry. We don't be angry for nothing. <laughs> Except you understand that they are secret. And you plow their secret so that you can get the same. May I talk to somebody a relevant gift is on your life? Yeah. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? So you see, when these things rest on us, ladies and gentlemen, we begin to see dimensions opening for us. That's what the Bible says. So what comes to you is a function of the gift you carry. He gave them according to their abilities. So bigger talents, bigger gifts may never, I mean, bigger, you know, virtues may never come until you, you stir up something about your ability. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, Brother Paul the Apostle was speaking to the Corinthian church. He said unto them, he said, you Corinthians, oh my goodness. He said, I cannot speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto canna, even as, even unto babes. <laughs> Even because, uh, he said, I feed you with milk and not with milk. Because you cannot bear them. And even up until now, you are still not able to bear them. Can you see? He said, I can't speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal. He said, even as unto babes. He said, because you are carnal. 
Do you understand what I'm talking about? He said, I feed you with meat and not with meat. I'm not with meat. I feed you with meat and not with meat. Now, he said, but Paul said, I can't speak unto you as unto spiritual. But I can only speak unto you as unto carnal, as unto babes. He said, the revelations I passed across to you. He said, they are revelations of babes. They are revelations, ladies and gentlemen, of children. <laughs> they are not deep things in God. <laughs> Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? He said, because you are carnal. He said, there is envy and strife and all those things among you. He says, so I can't speak on you. He says, so what I pass across to you is a function of your capacity, your ability to bear. He said, for you cannot bear them, and even up until now, you can. You are still not able to. First Corinthians chapter three from verse one. So you see, it is it is a stupid thing to give somebody what he cannot bear. <laughs> it is a crazy thing to take a bar and put it in the mouth of a two-day whole baby, and then put you know. Uh, 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 p- 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 put some strong meat, some beef uh, in the mouth of the baby and be expecting the baby to crack and chew and swallow that. Ladies and gentlemen, the, b- the baby can't do that. Uh, the baby's just going to struggle with it. Uh, there's somebody here, the Lord said that the devil had reduced you to bones. Uh, he said, I should let you know, you know the meaning that God said the person knows what I'm talking about. The bone level here simply means that the fatness around the meat is gone. You are cracking bones. Uh, the finance has been challenged. Uh, but I've got a good news for you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The same that has called me to service from tonight. I command fatness on your bones. I command the value of dry bones right now to respond. I say in the name of Jesus, let flesh come on the bones. 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 Let flesh come on the business. Let finance come on the business. Let finance come on the business. Let favor come on the contract. Let favor come on the application. I said, take it in the name of Jesus. And after flesh came, he said, can these rebels live? You know, he said, speak now. And when I t- commanded them to come alive, there was a loud cry. There was a loud shout. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as I command everybody to come alive, uh, you're going to shout with all your strength. Uh, and the power and the ability of God uh, will rest on every aspect of that person's life. Uh, so I command uh, every aspect come alive. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? So your ability determines what you can bear. And what you can bear determines what is transferred to you. In John chapter number 16 and verse number 12, Jesus speaking. John chapter 16 and verse number 12, Jesus teaching. He said, many things I wish to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. Can you imagine? That is a very dangerous thing. Eh? The things, the word of life that can change your life. A word from God can change your life forever, according to Kenneth Copeland. And Jesus said, many of them. He can't go and But he said, many. If I were them, I would hold Jesus. You are not going anywhere. But Jesus said, it's not my fault. He said, you cannot bear them now. There is no ability, there is no capacity to carry it. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Have you heard about the statement, the weight of glory? Eh? Glory carries weight. That should be Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. The Bible says our light affliction <laughs> eh? is, is, is working for us is working for us a far more and exceeding eternal weight of glory. So glory has its own weight. If it comes on your life, yeah, God bless me, God make me president, and you are not ready, <laughs> you will be finished. Joseph was thinking that they would just start and be bowing down at that time. At that time, his level was too low. His level was to what? This, he had the revelation. You see, the Bible said when I was a child, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, oh, sorry, chapter 13, verse 12, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I taught as a child. You see, you will see the Bible say, I spake first before I taught. So children, eh, it's firstly in their mouth before it's in their brain for processing. Do you understand what is sort of, if there was a day, Pastor Sin came to my house. Peter said, Pastor Sin, we are starting swimming lessons now. I said, Jesus. So we don't have any secrets in this house. <laughs> Do you get what I'm talking about? Somebody said that is how they have a pastor. They are children. They speak before they think. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Now, I'm about to round up. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Is somebody receiving something here tonight? Now, you see, he just saw a revelation. Hey! 
hey, I saw 12, 11 star. Buy for me. 11. And then he saw another one. He said, I saw all your sheaves. Buy into my home. Ah, Taluma Agbakwe, his destiny will be subjugated. Do you know what I do? They planned his execution immediately. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Anything he saw, he will come and tell them, can you see, I saw this. <laughs> when God dealt with him, when ability came, eh? they came, they said, we are from one father. He said, are you sure? He now began to speak as to them. He began to speak to them through an interpreter. He did not disclose himself. Before he was disclosing, until they finished the food there. Ah. <laughs> and they now came back to come and buy again. And when they came back to come and buy again, he still, do you understand what I'm talking about? He still didn't introduce himself. He has what? They bowed down. They were worshiping all the time, the first time, the second time. And he still didn't introduce himself. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Before, the moment you show him, he's, he, as he's waking up from the sleep, he's flying straight to the room of Judah. <laughs> to go back and inform him that I saw you, Judah, portrait it for me. <laughs> Is that what the guy I'm talking about? But now, he's grown up. I said, now he's what? He's grown up. That is it. Ladies and gentlemen, God cannot commit the prime ministership into your hand until you grow. If you, uh, if, imagine if he became prime minister that way. He would just shatter and scatter the plan of God. <laughs> there are so many things he cannot. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He's a babe. So ladies and gentlemen, somebody needs to step up. And how do I need to step up tonight? Very quickly. We are doing something right now. Ladies and gentlemen, one major way to build your ability. Ladies and gentlemen, is what Jesus told us. He gave us the key. Ay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He gave us the key. He said it in John chapter number 16. Verse 12, he said, many things I wish to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. Verse 13 now. He said, how be it, Kalabo Zabra here, when the capacity enlarger comes. <laughs> he shall guide you into all truth. What is the truth? The truth at the eyes was. He said, your word is what? His truth. So, you see, all the words I wish to tell you, we will guide into all of them. All of them. So, by the spirit, you will locate all of them. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Now, you see, Jesus is saying something here that is very crucial. That by the Spirit, there is a gentleman, everything you cannot be and now the capacity and larger will build your ability to that level and then will show you that revelation. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? And then you'll be able to bear it, you'll be able to sustain it, you'll be able to keep it, and you'll be able to walk in the strength of the revelations. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? You see, before every revelation Joseph shared, when he caught the revelation that God will come and uh, Jesus will come one day and the dead will rise in Israel, he didn't, he didn't share with his brother. He said, carry my corpse. They didn't carry any other person's corpse. They buried all that there. Judah died in Egypt and is in Egypt he did. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? His body. I mean, Reuben died in Egypt and his bones are still in Egypt. But ladies and gentlemen, on the day of the re on the day Jesus yielded up the ghost, uh, and on the day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, Joseph came out of grief. <laughs> because he had the revelation, never, he had not come to understand that some things are personal. They are not general. I'm talking to somebody here. Before, once he sees it, he makes it general. May I talk to somebody here in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I prophesy over your life that tonight God is building your abilities. <laughs> God has built his ability, now he's mature to handle things. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So God can begin to communicate bigger things. The Bible says, he says, strong men belong unto those who have exercised their muscles. This is, they have come to the place of maturity. So God can begin to communicate deeper things about resurrection of Jesus, even unto him. Ladies and gentlemen, if you see ordinary style, you can't keep it. Can you keep the revelation of resurrection? You need to grow. So what you are receiving from the Holy Spirit has to firstly build your ability and then begin to show you those things. Begin to take you to those heights. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? And see, ladies and gentlemen, there was a man among the disciples of Jesus that walked in that revelation so strong. He's by the name Paul the what? The apostle. He knows how to stir up the Holy Ghost to build his ability. Let me tell you this. There is something about speaking in tongues. It is one cardinal way to stir up the Holy Ghost to build your ability. Your ability will rise like an edifice. The Holy Spirit, you see, anytime you are speaking in tongues, you are telling the Holy Ghost, please begin to command angels. Please begin to release so much of grace that this block be added on top of this and this one on top of this. And before you know what is happening, a mighty edifice will arise. Do you know what I'm talking about? Blocks are added upon blocks. Anytime you are praying in the Holy Ghost, the Bible says in Jude chapter number 1 verse 20, he says, who? 
Maku Shakata. Jude 1 20. He said, Beloved, he said, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. That is one way of building up yourself. You will just see your ability being built up. You will see your capacity rising. You will see special ability at work in you. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 14, starting from verse number 2, the Bible says, Whoever speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God. How be it in the spirit that is speaketh mysteries? How be it in the spirit that is speaketh mysteries? And verse number 4, the Bible says, Whoever prophesy, the Bible says he exhorts others. He said, but whoever speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. The word edify means to build up into an edifice. You, you see, yeah, he is but a power by reason of experience. He said, when you are speaking in tongues, you are building up your life. He will become a giant edifice, uh, the envy of the world. Everybody comes to see it. Well, my goodness, have you seen that tallest beauty? People go to Dubai to see those structures. Am I talking to somebody here? People will be traveling all over the world to come and see the life of him man who has built his gift. People will come to redemption camp to come and see the life of a man who has built his grace. People will come and see indigenous in the life of a man who has built his grace. They will come to your residence to see the life of a sister who has built her grace. Huh? Am I talking to somebody here? Am I speaking to somebody here? The Bible says he builds up himself into an edifice. Now in the matter of two or three witnesses, the scripture says every truth shall be established. Here is brought up Paul saying, when you speak in tongues, you are building up to an edifice. And Jude, the brother of our Lord Jesus Christ, also say, when you speak in tongues, that is to say, they were regularly doing this, and they were experiencing the same. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, in that verse 18, 1 Corinthians chapter number 4, brother Paul was writing to the Corinthian church, a church even not behind in any spiritual gift. Brother Paul said unto them, he said, I speak in tongues more than you all. When you go through the Amplified Bible, he said, I speak in tongues more than the result of all of you combined. That means the combined cumulative effect of the speaking in tongues of the entire church. But Paul said, me alone, no, I beat it. For a man to say that is a dangerous tonga. I said, it's a dangerous what? No wonder he wrote to third of the New Testament. You know, Jesus said many things I want to tell you, but I can't tell you now. Now he passed those things through, but Paul. He passed, why? He, said, he was the one who built his ability. More than even a, the most gifted church, spiritually, like that. He, he was always speaking, speaking, speaking. Now, the ability just kept skyrocketing. So he was receiving, he said the spirit speaker expressly. He's the one using those things. As in, what just has prayers in Revelation? What just give me? I will. God bless you. Check it out. Oh, Papa, Maroseloa. You understand? Some people are still on the street level. Don't go to the street But you need to just express. Somebody in my just express. In the revelations of your destiny, what just express. Lale. Your ability will be built up tonight. And you will begin to see visions of the Almighty. I said tonight, somebody's ability will rise. And you begin to attract greater virtues, greater talents, greater profits, greater results, greater gains. If that is you, let him be the most receiving in the house. Are you catching what I'm talking about? As we just pray for the next few minutes, ladies and gentlemen, this is how it works. He began to build his own. And he, God, you he, he understand that, ladies and gentlemen, the revelation of the new birth was actually passed into the heart by Brother Paul. The revelation of what I call new creation realities largely was passed to plan by Brother Paul. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He was the one that, you can't read the four gospels and understand those things except by the spirit. It is when you read the writings of Paul that you understand those things. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Jesus said, those things are the things I want to tell you, but you can't bear it. I'll be when the capacity and larger comes and you know how to stimulate his capacity, how to stimulate his ability, how to stir up the strength that is inside that spirit. He said, that's the strength will be transfused inside of you and you will begin right now to walk in the revelations of those things. And but Paul was downloading them expressly. He said, I will come to visions and revelations of the law. Ladies and gentlemen, God was expressly, expressly revealing those things to him. Among the disciples, he's the only one that will tell you that, oh, he was taken up to heavens. Apart from John who saw the book of Revelation. But Paul said, I know a man who was taken up, 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, who was taken up to heavens. Whether in the body or in the flesh, I know not. 
God. He said, but I see inexpressible things. Now, he is the man that is always talking about this thing. He saw so many. On her, even Brother Peter in his last letter, you know, Brother Peter wrote in 2 Peter chapter, is it chapter 1 verse 12 now? He said, I will soon put up this tabernacle. That was his last letter on the heart. Now, chapter 3 verse 16, and I think that should be around the last verse of his writing. But uh, Peter said, even, even our beloved brother Paul <laughs> has written unto you many things by the wisdom God gave him. He said, which are difficult to understand. Even Peter himself is wrestling with the thing. <laughs> He's struggling with the polar, polar revelation. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Because Paul built it, and Peter has been in this thing before Paul came. But ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter whether you have been ahead of me. If I can build my ability, I will get ahead of him. There is overtake us grace in the house tonight. Somebody's ready to build his ability. I said somebody's ready to move beyond what I'm talking about. Are you ready tonight? Are you ready tonight? Are you ready tonight? He said those things are difficult to understand, which many are twisting. They are resting to their own destruction. That means when somebody can build his ability, you will go beyond your generation. I don't care whether they've been there ahead of you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to go ahead of them. You're going to move ahead of them. The the wisdom of God will be stirred up on your inside. One thing that is stirred up when you pray in tongues, the Lord, is wisdom and the gift of revelation through His knowledge and the opening of your eyes of understanding. You will be seeing depth into things. That means ability for leadership will come. Your gift will rise. The Bible said in Daniel one seventeen, and the Lord gave unto these children even knowledge and skills in all wisdom and learning. Now you see, God gave them Daniel, Shadrach, and Abednego. God endowed them, but this guy continued in prayers. The Bible said Daniel knelt down three times daily. Daniel six ten as it was his custom. Just continue building, building. When they entered chapter 6, they said you must be the most excellent president. And the king was ruling all over the world. Now imagine somebody made number one president all over the world. A captive, but kept building the spiritual gift. But kept building. Joseph entered into the land of captivity, kept building it when he came out. Genesis 41 verse number 38, the king said, can we find any like this in whom there is the spirit of God? That means this man has built his ability to a point where when you're telling dreams. He doesn't need to go and pray. He doesn't need to go and pray. He will just tell you. I mean, online consultative function is on him. I mean, just a touch with him. You will hear heaven speak. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking to somebody here. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, can we find any like this? He said, since God has shown you this, there is none as wise and as discreet as you. That is ability of the spirit. Operating through wisdom, through knowledge, through understanding. God, he has raised it before he didn't have it. But now he has it. May I talk to somebody here? From tonight, your ability will be raised. Everybody has it in a measure, but it is increasable based on your personal sense of responsibility. Rest your feet. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. All lekos somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Building up yourself on your most holy faith. This ability is given unto everybody. This honor has all the saints of God. Everybody can pray in tongues. And the signs shall follow those that believe in me. In my name they shall speak in new tongues. Somebody speak it in tongues. I said blow it out in other languages. I said blow it out is for all believers. It's a supernatural ability that unlock every other door. Can I again say anytime I speak in tongues, I see more finances flowing. He said, anytime I speak in tongues, ladies and gentlemen, I see my God even more opportunities. I see more gifts of the spirit at work. He said, I see better operations of this. I see more deliverances in my ministry. Ladies and gentlemen, somebody begin to do it. I said, somebody begin to do it. I woke up this morning, I was praying in tongues and praying in tongues. I prayed in tongues all through till I came. For hours upon hours, I will I not be flowing at an extraordinary rate. I will results not be flowing in my hands. Ladies and gentlemen, somebody here got the saying, can you build up your ability? Can you build up your ability? Can you build up your ability? Can you build up your ability tonight? My product Zokata. Overtake us grace is in speaking in tongues. Malako Zakata. But I pause I'll do it more than the whole church. Somebody prayed in tongues. Can we pray some higher tongues in the spirit? Can we pray some higher tongues? Leko sinamante yegebo sharahadi. 
Mambrele gerokste zombreni ingerekto zekato. Mambrele gerokste zubra hakdazia. Lobra le gerokste zombreni ingerista. Mambreni ingerokte zubra le gerokste. Mama mante ye kreke gerokste. Bebro barate ye bro barakata. Ya bro barate zendre keboza. Ligo bra le gerokste. Mengre nengere dokte zubra le gerokte zubre di gerokste. Mandele rodokste. Barre koto zekata. Babra le gerokte zubre. Somebody pray, 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 Capacity building tonight. I said, pray, 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 pray. Man, pray the ghost. Capacity building by the Holy Ghost. I said, speaking tongues. I said, speaking tongues. He said, praying in the Holy Ghost. Mako zakota yagaba. Lakabaya, your finance can be built when you pray in the Holy Ghost. I said, your deposits can be built. Your gift can speak louder when you pray in the Holy Ghost. Mako to sobre ligerost. Man, pray. La garakte Mambre de Gerosta, Mambre de Gerosta Zubredia, Rato Zegetoya, Magre Geregero Sakata, Mamamante, Yegre Gerosto, Babre Legeroxta, Mangre Digabok Zalirosh Tayagaba, Magre Legeroxta Zobre Ligeroxta, O Legorobo Shakatayagaba, O yes, sweet Holy Ghost, sweet Holy Spirit, sweet Holy Spirit, somebody call for the help of the Spirit. He is the helper. You've run out of energy to pray. Marco Zagradia, he is the standby. Can you just pray in the Holy Ghost? I see oil coming on your lamp. Yakado Sakata. I see grace coming on your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meko Brali Gorosta Zubredi Gorosta. I see freshness be released tonight. I see freshness be released tonight. Abilities are increasing. Oh my goodness. Mapro Legorosta Zubredia. Abilities are increasing. I see abilities are increasing. He gives them talents based on their various abilities. I say abilities are increasing. Capacities are increasing. Somebody build up your capacity muscles. I say build up your capacity muscles. Marekoto zebra haga. Marekoto zembro legerosta. Mambra legerosta. And I'm hearing somebody's entering the autobahn of the spirit tonight. You are entering the express road of the spirit. You are entering the autobahn. Ay, 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 ay. Mato zebro kata. Rekato zagata. Father yekebo zako if I have a thousand tongues, <laughs> there still will be enough. Ah, Mamande, 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 by the Spirit. By the Spirit, just lift up holy hands and say, By the Spirit, Ligo Shadaba Krada Rokta Sokataya Gabaya, Marido Sopra Liga Rokto Zakataya Gaba Shakata. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, sweet Holy Spirit, sweet Heavenly One. Somebody just worship Him tonight. Stay in right here we go. Feeling us, feeling us with your love. I'm for all these blessings. i 
the night of his betrayal, I took the bread and I broke it. He said, this is my flesh broken for you. And I'm hearing refreshing, refreshing. God said, there's somebody here, your whole life is refreshing. Your tired muscles are refreshing. Your tired financial capacity is refreshing. Wherever you have, you are watching me online, please get Holy Communion right now. I give you one second to please prepare it right now. This is so crucial, the power of the Spirit. The energy, the capacity of the Holy Ghost is so strong on this meeting. <laughs> it's so strong on this meeting. Just take it right now. It will renew love in your marriages. It will renew oneness even in your marriage. It will renew favor for you. Wherever you find yourself, attractiveness will go with you. God, I'm hearing refreshing, refreshing. The Bible says that it may give us evil seasons refreshing from the presence of God, from the Holy Spirit tonight. As you break it, Elohu Shadabaya, can you break the bread and take it? Masota Yagabo Shakata Yagaba. Lengerabo Shakataya. Likewise, he took the wine. Likewise, he took the wine. And he said, This is the new testament in my blood, for a I'm telling you, I'm not lying. God is doing significant miracles tonight. God is doing significant miracles tonight. By the power of the Holy Ghost, your, the favor on your life is renewed. I said, kings will favor you. Nobles will favor you. I said, authorities will favor you. There is a season's refreshing. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Can you just take it right now? Sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Sweet Heavenly One. Staying right here with us. Stay. We believe you have been blessed by this message. For more information, prayers, and counseling, you can reach us on the following numbers 080 33 706 938 and 080 28 28 1839. Or visit our website at www dgccinternational.org and connect with us on our social media platforms facebook.com forward slash dgccintl instagram at dgccintl 
On YouTube, search Divine Glory Christian Church. Our Twitter handle is at DGCCINTL. Stay blessed.